The Traveler or Lumin here in my case. I'll use her name throughout this video instead of the Traveler. Seriously guys, how many of us here actually choose this Lumin as a starter? Comment down below. Now Lumin, our main character, the first 5 star character we ever got in Genshin Impact right at the very start of the game. And I'm sure Hoyoverse have caught many jumping for joy since getting a 5 star character is the first thing in the game in which she's supposed to have skill, kit and gameplay like a 5 star character, right? Well, that's still for you to decide. Lumin is going to be pretty much a mysterious character to the rest of the game, especially with her ability to switch element whenever she arrives at a new region. And with Sumeru region coming very near how will Dendro Lumin turns out to be? Well, that's what we'll be discussing and predicting here in the video today, so that you have an idea and can start building your traveler at this point if you haven't already. Now guys, it is now the start of August, meaning that our Discord monthly giveaway is opened once again. If you want to have the chance to save more primos to pull for upcoming Dendro characters, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and enter the giveaway on my Discord. We're giving out more welcomes this month than usual, so I'm sure your chance of winning is pretty high. Link to the Discord in the description guys, and with that, let's just hop into the video. So far, we can already use Animo, Geo, and Electro Element on Lumin. Animo Lumin specializes in a bit of crowd control but mainly focuses on her C6 where she gives Animo Resistance Shred, which is basically the only character in the game that can do this at this point if I am not mistaken, and an additional Elemental Shred for the element infused with her burst. This is quite good, however, her best kit is also available to most other Animo character plus they have even better skills so most of the time Anima Lumine isn't being used. Geo Lumine, my point of view, is currently the best element for her at this point in time because of the three Geo structures she's able to create that have a lot of uses plus quite decent off-field damage. But moreover, the ability to give 10% crit rate at C1 and up to 25 energy regen for the team is many of the time preferred as a support character by many of us. For Electro Lumine, she's pretty decent also with the main aim to focus on increasing the whole team's burst uptime by giving a lot of energy regen, she can also be a decent electro off field damage support, but then again the amount of energy regen she gives to the team is quite excessive many of the time, plus there are better electro off field support out there so she's not too popularly used. However, for Dendro Lumine, will she change everything and become a meta widely used character? While we'll still have to wait for the official information on her as well as once she comes out in play in order to know for sure. But we do have a bit of information on her at this point in time to kind of know how she'd perform if the current info will become official. And I have to say guys, Dendro Lumine is going to be amazing and have the potential to finally become the 5 star character she's deserved to be. Now we'll quickly look a bit into what we got about Dendro Lumine at this point, however guys do remember that it is subjected to change, as it's not confirmed in any way by Hoyoverse, we're just here to basically discuss her potential as a Dendro character. So from what it is stated, basically her normal attack will be the same as always with the same level of scaling. Her E skill from what it is read is quite similar to Electro Lumine as well where she unleashes a spray of razor sharp leaves that go before you and deal Dendro damage. So basically once instances of damage for you to generate particles and deal damage. Now what's good about this skill is that it has decently good scaling for Lumine I would say of up to 368% damage at talent level 8 while having a low cooldown of 8 seconds. So let's say that even if she only generates 2 particles from this she can at least generate more in a short amount of time. Now that's for her skill but Dendro Lumine really starts to shine when it comes to her burst. For Dendro elements you can 
kind of already know about there will be many potential reactions along with dendro and at this point we mainly know that they will react with hydro, electro and pyro. So same goes with her burst in which it produces what seems to be a Lee Lotus Lamp that stays on the field for 12 seconds dealing off field dendro damage. However, it will react differently when it comes to contact with different elements and from what it is said, if it is reacted with hydro, the lamp's AoE and the AoE of its attacks are increased. If it's reacting with electro, then the lamp's attack speed is increased. And if it is reacted with pyro, the lamp will explode after a short delay and then disappear, dealing AoE dendro damage. Now generally, the scaling will be 130% damage per tick at talent level 8, and the explosion from pyro contact has very good scaling here of doing 641% damage at talent level 8. In which I would say currently here, Dendro Lumine going with Pyro character will probably be the best as you can basically wait for like 10 seconds of a burst doing Dendro damage and then afterward one it's nearly and apply Pyro into it for explosion therefore taking benefit of the maximum effects of this burst. However, in reality, leaving her burst there for like 10 seconds without having any element infusion is quite tough because most of the time you have other elements being played here. So we'll just have to wait till she comes and tests her out to find more about this. Also her burst does require 80 energy which is quite a lot, therefore running Lumine solo in the team without another Dendro element support will be tough for her to have her burst constantly up. But we'll look more into this during our build speculation sections. Dendro Lumine's passive and constellation are what I would say makes her a real superior character than her past elemental forms. Her first passive gives the ability of increasing EM of active character within her burst by 6 EM every second. And this have a maximum of 10 stacks, which is going to be a 60 EM maximum increase is going to be quite decent. However, you do have to stay within the field range. Now, I don't know if this will snapshot, it will probably not, otherwise it will be too good. And the second passive is that every point of EM the traveler possesses increase the damage dealt by her razor blade by 0.15% and damage dealt by her burst is up by 0.1% which is kind of like a quality of life change for a sub DPS Lumine on the team. As for her constellation, C1 gives her a 3.5 energy after her E skill hits the opponent, an okay energy health for Lumine though 3.5 energy isn't too much. C2 increases her burst duration by 3 seconds for a total of 15 seconds which is huge or in other words only a 5 seconds cooldown if you manage to have her burst up time constantly up. C4 is pretty good also of giving you a 5 stack of EM increase from her passive talent which is basically a 30 EM increase straight away if her burst reactions are triggered, therefore only requiring you a 5 second before getting a maximum 60 EM bonus for the on-field character, leaving you up to 10 seconds of EM increase uptime which is good. C6 is where Lumine becomes so so amazing, basically giving you the on-field dendro character a 12% dendro damage increase and if Lumine's burst is infused with one of the reactable element then that corresponding elements get a 12% damage bonus also. Now I don't know if this can be applied for off field character it might be not as there is no mention of anything here other than the active character but if it can be applied for off field character it will literally make Dendro Lumine an insane character but nonetheless everything Lumine is given here for her kit is already very good especially her constellation where every one of them gives a real boost to her quality of life. Now, since we know that most of Lumine's value comes from her burst, she can basically be a support or a sub DPS character, in which you want to be a bit mindful of how you build her and you can actually already pre-farm for some of Lumine's build. First and foremost, her burst requires 80 energy, or in other words, she generally will need at least 160 energy recharge and above plus another Dendro character on the team to have her burst constantly be used. Now I won't recommend you to run Lumine solo in order to take advantage of her C6 bonus for Dendro character and her ease of burst uptime. A solo Lumine would be sure to require 200 energy above to get her burst constantly up where you have to compromise a lot of her damage which you don't want to because Lumine has very decent scaling on her attack. Therefore overall our main would be
me to have 160 energy for Lumine plus her attack level as high as possible for a decent sub DPS character. Where there are many things that we can do, but I'll first look into the artifacts. We know that there will be other dendro artifacts coming along in the game, and if the information are correct, we do have access to a dendro artifact set that reduces 25% dendro resistance, which is actually pretty good support for our dendro team plus Lumine's damage. Running this set means you require luck on your energy recharge substats plus running an energy recharge weapon like Sack Sword Lumine or the Favonius Sword and that is okay. However, for me personally, I feel that there's an even better set that we can run and something that we can already farm at this point in time. And that's our Emblem Fate set where you get a 20% energy bonus plus your burst deals more damage based on the amount of energy that you have. Now remember everything on Denro Lumine comes down to her burst means this is an absolute reliable set for Lumine, where you definitely not have to worry about energy for her as you're rewarded for having running high energy recharge on Lumine. So even if you run Sack or Favonius Sword on Lumine, she'd still get a decent damage boost. That or you can now run an EM weapon like the Iron Sting for her to have more burst damage due to her passive talent too. For me, I definitely run Emblem Fate on Lumine as I won't have to worry about her burst uptime anymore while still doing damage. Now for artifact stats, if you're going for full support Lumine, you can run Energy Recharge Sands, Dendro Goblet, and a Crit Circlet. For sub DPS Lumine, it can be EM Sands, Dendro Goblet, and a Crit Circlet. Now there can be an option for full EM Lumine as well, where you run all EM artifacts of course, but that might not be the best case, so I'll just usually stick with one of the two above options. It is a pretty interesting build I would say. Now either way guys, Dendro Element will be for sure a very interesting addition to Genshin Impact after a long waiting time. And right now, if you haven't already completed leveling up Lumine, I'd say it's actually time to get her all the way up to level 90 if you haven't got anything else to do, because you won't have to rush build her once you're in Sumeru knowing how good Dendro Lumine would turn out to be. Now preparing for Lumine is one thing and if you think that that is all you have to do to prepare for Sumeru, then I can tell you that there will be at least 10 more things you want to keep in mind to prepare for Sumeru. So be sure to check out this video right here to be fully prepared for once Sumeru arrives. I hope that you have enjoyed the video guys and once again be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to not miss out of my future videos. And with that I wish you a super day and I will catch you on the next video.